Hello, this is Andrew with Missing Remote. Got here some Ubiquiti Unify Protect cameras. This is the AI Theta. They announced this a while ago. I haven't been able to find great resources around what the actual performance of this thing is. There were a couple of reviews, but none of them were really answered the questions I was looking at. Uh, the main one was, what's the low light performance of this thing? It does not have an IR emitter. We are in the process of building a house. I made a couple a video about that and a whole bunch of posts on the website talking about all that. I, w I would need to solve the problem of putting cameras at the entryways. And I don't really like cameras in living spaces. I do want cameras pointed at entryways like doors, but I don't want a gross camera camera sitting out there pointing at a door if that is also kind of in a living space, if that makes sense. These things are supposed to solve that because you have this little tiny lens with a camera body just put away remotely. Figured I'd get some of these and answer the questions I had. And while I was answering the questions I had, I would answer the questions that maybe you had. What we have here is the normal, not pro version of the AI Theta. It comes with two lenses, a wide angle and a 360. Pro lenses are supposed to have better low light performance, which is something we're gonna test because I also grabbed one of the AI Theta Pro wide angle lenses because my application is probably gonna be pointed at a door instead of hanging from the ceiling for the 360 view. And then I also grabbed the audio thing, which seems pretty cool. And I hope that Ubiquity adds the ability to integrate this in with the doorbell system. Cause I don't think it does right now. This would be a great chime. Like they sell a Wi-Fi chime for the G4 doorbell doorbells. And if you get the PoE doorbell, it comes with a PoE chime, which is awesome. But this should be part of that system. This should all play nice together. But it doesn't right now, as far as I know. There's a thread talking about that on the UI forums. I'm gonna put a link in the description. Please vote for it because it's a big miss that it doesn't do that. Let's get this all unboxed so that uh, we can start answering questions because one of the questions I had was kind of how big is all this stuff? It's hard to get a sense for that. So in the box, we have the remote unit, which is not giant. This is an SSD. I figured I'd create a little familiar thing because I think if that helps with the how big is this thing. So it's about what? Three SSDs wide or deep and uh, one SSD wide. Also, here's my phone. This is a Pixel 8 Pro. It's a little bit smaller than the uh, Pixel 8 Pro from a uh, footprint, but obviously quite a bit wider. Inside, we have the two lenses I mentioned. We have the wide angle lens and then the 360 lens and then some mounting hardware, a little level thing. That's kind of cool. That's actually very neat that it's in there like that. That's pretty cool. Cable, and I guess these are, oh, I see. This goes in here to kind of, to go in here to um, attach it to the drywall or whatever you've, some screws for the mounting bracket that you know, has some holes in here and then that goes on here like that. So you can attach it to a wall. Oh crap, I locked it in there. So I managed to lock that on there, which that's kind of weird that it works that way, but whatever. Inside of here with the mounting hardware, there's one of those handy dandy key things that you get with the um, access points, which makes it unlock. So yeah, don't lose that. All right, so let's check our audio thing. Oh, that's a lot smaller than I expected. So here's the audio. It also has a USB type C for, you know, plugging into here. Mounting bracket with a little lovely dealy drywall thing for the other side. USB type C cable. Here is our SSD again. So yeah, that's a lot smaller than I expected. Hopefully I can get this thing to work with the doorbell because I have a G4 door doorbell. Um, I did a review of it a long time ago. Um, it's 
pretty nice. It's actually gotten a lot better since I originally installed it. Let's check out the other lens here. You can buy, just like you can buy the lenses a la carte, you can also buy these a la carte. The pricing for these things, you don't actually save any money on the pro units, I don't think. I think this plus this is the same as like the pro bundle, but this, the one I got, you get this plus the two lenses for 300 bucks, which is cheaper than buying this plus the pro lens. So there we go. And this, I guess, is the pro mounting kit. So the pro mounting kit, like the difference is that this is a much bigger unit. So this is the normal lens and this is the pro lens. So there might actually be something to that, this whole low light thing. See, this is a good thing. This is the kind of things I wanted to answer. Like, what is the difference between a pro lens and the normal lens? Well, <laughs> size. Size is the difference between the pro lens and the normal lens. All right, enough of me rambling on about form factor. Let's uh, get all this stuff plugged in and see what happens. Oh, before moving on, my dad, this is PoE. This is powered over Ethernet and the network connectivity comes over Ethernet too, which is awesome. It annoys me. I have a couple of the um, little other cameras, G3 micro things. I can't remember what they're called. You can PoE power them with their Wi-Fi, and i not a fan of that. Um, so PoE on here plus full network connectivity on here is fantastic. Now let's go get it plugged in. So I've had a chance to test out the AI Theta. It's been a bit of a roller coaster. Like most UI cameras, the adoption process kind of sucks. I can understand that a little with the Wi-Fi cameras, there's some complexity there that doesn't exist with a wired device. But with the wired camera, there's, there's no reason why I should need to use my phone to connect it, to get, actually get it to adopt. That should just work in the browser. It shows up there, but for some reason, I wasn't able to make it work through the browser. It blows my mind that UI trips over its shoelaces on something so simple. Once it's adopted, the user experience is fairly seamless. It updates the firmware and joins the farm, just like all the other barnyard cameras. Let's cover some quick points before getting to the important part. There appears to be a slight power consumption difference between the two lenses, which I get the Pro is bigger and clearly is doing a little bit more. While the cables are physically USB-C, they are not USB-C. Ubiquity has publicly stated that they intend to sell longer cables, but I'm not holding my breath on that. First, that they'll actually do it. They have a history of promising things and then not delivering it. And second, if they do, I would suspect it's going to be a price that I'm not willing to pay. I don't understand why they didn't use USB Type-C. There's plenty of bandwidth there. If it's a cable compatibility thing, then setting minimum requirements would have solved that problem. The packaging for this camera is so awesome. It would be nice if we were able to put some real distance between the body and the uh, lenses. The included cables are only a meter, which means that you are installing the body in the wall or maybe on the other side of the wall right next to the lens. That's cool, but it's an opportunity missed. The lack of orientation controls in the mounting hardware here is also an opportunity missed. It would be nice if there were shims or something that you could use to change the viewing angle of the camera. This isn't gonna be a problem for how I intend to use it, but in a commercial setting, which I think is the primary audience for these devices, it totally is. You might want to install these guys 20 feet up in the air. That's the basics covered. Now let's talk about the important part, imaging performance. This is where things get uh, complicated. To test all that out, I figured it'd be useful to install the lenses into a piece of drywall with the uh, audio thing, partially so that I could see what it actually looked like, and I could also show my wife what it would look like, but also because it's a much better way to test it because everything just kind of is held where it needs to be. If you just want the TLDR, here it is. Provided that you give the camera enough light, it's pretty good. The pro lens is better than the normal lens. That's to be expected. Where things get dicey is when the light level drops. Neither lens does IR. So if you want to use them in an environment that gets dark, um, they suck. 
But to be fair, the pro lens does suck a little bit less than the normal one. I will show you some actual comparisons in a bit, so stick around. But before getting to that, I have to wonder what Ubiquity was thinking. If they make another camera that doesn't support IR, I'm not aware of it. So they clearly get the whole needs to see in the dark thing. I don't understand why the AI Theta doesn't. It's, it's not cheap. It doesn't appear to be packaging limited. A G4 doorbell does IR and isn't much bigger when you think about the size of the lens and the IR emitter. Okay, maybe I can see it for the normal lens. It's pretty small, but with the Pro, come on, that, that's just crazy. Even if they were to make it slightly larger, why would, they, why would you not? Why not support this critical use case? What possible reason could there be to explain why this camera just can't see in the dark? It's mind-blowing and deeply, deeply disappointing. Yes, I suspected that the low light performance wasn't gonna be awesome, but the Pro does say on the product page, exceptional image quality with superb low light performance and enhanced dynamic range. I expected better there. Let's look at some images in my basement. I ended up here because I was having a hard time controlling light in the room I started with. I'm sorry for the clutter. HVAC room is getting serviced. Don't tell my wife. There are four LED spotlights in this room. In this image, the dimmer is set to 100%. Note that the naming convention in the top left, which indicates the time of day and what lens is being used at the time. There's gonna be a consistent theme. The Pro does a better job, whether that's with the trueness of the colors or how it handles the dimmer bulbs, it's, it's just better. In my opinion, in this scenario, it is not enough to pay for the upgrade, but we should recognize that it is a win. So what about no artificial light in the morning? Remember it's January, sunrise was at 7, 19 a.m. that day. This is a basement, so the ambient light level is still fairly low, probably at a level where I would want to turn the light on if I was doing any kind of detail work, but I wouldn't need to for any other reason. Here again, the Pro is better. Not a huge difference along the side where the light comes in, but on the opposite side of the room, it's fairly pronounced. You can barely tell that that thing on the left side is a dresser with a normal lens, but it's quite easy to tell with the Pro. It's about the same story when we compare images captured in the afternoon. Sunset was at 437. Granted, it's gray outside, but yeah, uh, still an hour to go. So what happens when we turn the light really down? Here's a couple at 5.20 p.m. and a couple more at 8 p.m. So the best thing I can say is that the Pro does better. Is either in any way acceptable? Uh, no, not even close. And for reference, here's a shot from a G3 Instant camera, which I paid $36.54 including shipping and tax. So that it doesn't go unsaid, I am not in love with the G3 Instant. It's got some things that really annoy me, but it helps to frame the level to which it blows my mind that Ubiquity did not put infrared on the AI Theta. They put it on a $30 camera. Although I should probably mention that now that $30 camera is an $80 camera, but still, come on. It would be easy to write off the AI Theta, and I can't stress enough how disappointed I am with this camera given its price. But I like the form factor and the installation story. I don't want a nasty camera in my front entryway. I thought about using the $99 G4 Instant or the $129 G5 Flex. Uh, they both have infrared, two-way audio, and support the same basic feature set with object detection, but they look a lot like cameras. If I had to do it all over again, I might have tried harder to sell one of them to the wife. But I do like a challenge. And I like the AI Theta's form factor. It definitely wins there. The solution I came up with is an RGBW Zigbee light strip. Or if you have a dimmer in the area and are okay with leaving it on at a low level, they both provide enough light to make it work. Here's a few more images. The first is the dimmer in this basement room. It's set to 1%. 
on the four LED spots in the ceiling. The Pro is fine, but we probably need to take the normal lens up a few more levels to get good enough. And here's the RGBW strip at 40%, which is about 1.5 watts of electricity. Same story. The Pro is good enough or close to good enough. Uh, maybe some room to tweak it, but the normal needs a little bit more light. If this was a real environment, I would spend some time trying to place the strip better instead of just laying it along the windowsill. It would probably work better on the other side of the room, pointed outwards instead of up. And I would definitely want to use a diffuser to mount it and kind of soften the light in a production environment. But it works, which is the important thing. You can make it work. It still blows my mind that these hurdles exist. Why? UI, why? Here's another one that I found interesting. RGBW strip is on, ProLens versus G3. This is a good indicator of how much light is in the room because the G3 is still using IR. Don't get too wrapped up in the quality differences in the facial features. That's probably mostly due to the differences between a 1080p camera and a 4K camera. The AI Theta has four times the pixels. It makes a fairly strong case for why you should upgrade your 1080p cameras. The other way that this is a good sample is that it demonstrates the object detection magic that UI is doing on the AI Theta and that it works. It clearly works on people. I didn't try with license plates. I just can't imagine a scenario where I'd want to do license plate detection and want to deploy one of these. Anywhere I want that feature, I want an obvious camera that doesn't suck in the dark. Final thing on imaging performance, just in case somebody was tempted to use the 360 camera, here's an image. Uh, I wouldn't use it for anything, but I'm sure there's a use case for it. Lastly, since I bought the audio thing, I figured it would be a good thing to include that in the mix. Here's a quick clip of me having a conversation using it. So really, I just want to test that the audio thing here works. So, uh -huh. uh, can you just briefly describe the weather? Terrible. That, that uh, actually is very snowy. It is terrible. It works okay. There's a little bit of lag, very similar to how the G4 doorbell conversation feature works. It's, it's okay. Long term, I really want Ubiquity to make that more useful. At the very least, it should chime when the doorbell rings. That's just another place where they drop the ball. Hopefully we get some feature advancement there, but I'm not holding my breath. If I wasn't intending to review the AI Theta, I don't know that I would have bought the audio thing. I don't really see the value in it in its current state, but obviously if you're gonna deploy it in a place where recording audio is important or rudimentary interaction is important, then yeah, it's critical. That's all I have. Unfortunately, I'm in a place where I have very mixed feelings on this device. I would love to have loved it, but I can't say that I did. I think that for the price, it falls short in so many ways that it's hard not to be disappointed with it. I hope you found that useful. If you did, go ahead and like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thanks.